Welcome to my very first knit along that I have done in a video. Um, I wish we could do this live, but I'm just not quite sure that I'm ready uh, to do that. There is some special software that I would have to get and learn. So what I'm going to do for this knit along uh, is making several videos and I'll be posting them uh, in sequence over the next um, probably a couple of weeks and um, hopefully a number of you can follow along I'm really excited about this there was such a good response on the Facebook uh, group for knitted animal friends by Lois Crowther and uh, I'm really excited about it because uh, there there was Oh my goodness a number of really nice comments and I think another like almost a hundred people uh, did an encouraging like and so I know there's interest in it and I want to make it fun for all of us so this is very experimental and if you're doing this along with me uh, I hope you will post on YouTube because that's where you're watching this from and uh, let me know how it's going for you. We can post pictures of our process or progress over on the uh, Facebook site for Knitted Animal Friends. And uh, so if you've never joined that group, uh, you'll want to for sure. Lots of good information there, but it'll be a great place to post pictures. But if you have a question, I will be watching this YouTube site uh, for a number of days after each video is posted and please feel free to uh, ask questions or make a suggestion uh, I will try to answer those in the following uh, video which will be just a few days later as I said I'm really uh, this is experimental for me feeling my way through it so I appreciate all the encouragement from so many of you and uh, I've chosen the sloth because I haven't made it yet <laughs> and I've been wanting to do one of these little critters in a knit along and uh, so I just thought well the sloth would be really a, a lot of fun and if you've popped on to this video this is the book we're talking about some of you may not be familiar uh, with this series of books they're wonderful little critters and we've certainly enjoyed making them I think uh, the person that developed all of these Lois uh, uh, has done a terrific job uh, it would be fun to meet her someday uh, I've kind of changed up some of the patterns a bit to make it I knit in the round she knits in the flat and um, and it you can do them either way uh, but if you knit in the flat you can still hop onto this knit along I'm going to try to recognize um, the different points in the in the video if you're knitting in the flat what might be different than what we're doing in the round so hopefully uh, it won't just be people that knit in the round that that's not just for uh, knitters in the round only more the merrier is the way I look at it. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit though about some uh, needles and some things like that before we actually get started. And um, I'm going to first talk about the knitting needles I use. I use these flexi flips. I don't get paid anything for promoting these, but these are a double pointed uh, straight needle with a short little cord in the center and so it makes them very flexible but you can use straight double pointed needles for knitting in the round or flat uh, you can use short round um, or circular needles excuse me the short ones or you can use the long ones and do like the magic loop so whether you're knitting flat or knitting in the round you have several options um, I, when I first started making these little critters, I was using um, 
short circular needles that the cable was a little bit longer than what the flexi flips are and those work really well too I do a lot of sock knitting and uh, that's where I really discovered about the flexi flips and then discovered they work so well with our little critters so this is what I do uh, here again and you'll hear me say this a number of times probably there's no right or wrong figure out what works for you or figure out what you have and how that's how you can make that work so you don't have to go out and buy uh, a whole lot of product uh, you know if you've got some round needles or uh, double pointed needles you need at least need a double pointed needle uh, set uh, if you're going to do a straight needle um, well, I guess you wouldn't have to you could use longer straight needles too you'll figure that out but just use what works really well for you so that's the first thing I want to talk about the next thing is I want to talk about uh, this poly stuffing because I actually begin to stuff my critters as I knit you'll see me and I you're gonna see me do some knitting I'm gonna try to knit along with some of you that get started um, but I start filling uh, my critter as I knit now some people totally knit up the critter and then stuff at the end and you can do that too depending upon what form of construction that you do if you put the legs and arms on like I do, then you're gonna to need to stuff those as we go. But more of that will uh, fall into place information for you uh, as we get into the knitting. But it's the stuffing I wanna talk about. Um, I've always used, where'd my other little bag go? Don't be frustrated with me moving around a bit because uh, <laughs> you'll see me moving around quite a bit. Uh, in these videos but I've got two kinds of stuffing here but they're all the same company they all say polyfill and they are the same company uh, premium polyfill uh, is this one here this is the original one that I've always used and I've gotten this like at Joanne Fabrics uh, but most big box stores uh, carry this one. However, I was at the coast here a few weeks ago and I forgot to take my stuffing with me. So I quickly ran to Walmart and this is the only one uh, of the polyfill that Walmart had. And I have nothing against Walmart other than I do not like this stuffing. And uh, I wanted to tell you why. I think this other one, and they're both 100% polyfill, but this one from Walmart, uh, it feels like it has, like it feels like it needs to be washed. It feels like it's got a filler, I don't know what to call it, uh, but there's a thickness to it. It's it's a denser, and I find that with, with this one, um, it's, it's easier for the arms to get to feeling lumpy because it just kind of, compacts together uh, more solid in, in, in not a good way. Whereas this, and the only thing that I can see differently, this says the original, <laughs> and it also says premium. And I think I paid a little bit more money for this bag than the one from Walmart. But this uh, is, it, it's just airier. And you can pack it together, but it doesn't get lumpy. And it doesn't feel like it's got something on it or in it that needs to be washed off. It, it just has a much, much nicer feel to it. So um, I will continue to use this. And honestly, I'm not sure that I will even, maybe I'll donate the other one um, because I don't like it that much. And um, I, I just never thought about there being such a difference in fillers. Um, so that's just personal preference. You can stuff your critter with whatever you have available to you. But uh, if you've not tried this one that says original premium, um, this is really nice. And the critter, uh, the more you squeeze it, it just keeps coming back to its original uh, state. Whereas this other one from Walmart, I find as you kind of just, you know, if you were a child squeezing on it, I tried to play that way with it. Uh, it just felt like it was 
becoming more compact and had a heavier, denser feel to it. So it probably has a good usage someplace, but this is the one I prefer. Just wanted you to know that because I do get asked that question as to what, what is it that I use. So then now we're going to talk about the yarn and I got into my stash of uh, the Sheep G's which I've made a number of these critters. Next video I make I'll, I'll bring them and have them in here. Right now they're out in my living room and I really meant to bring them in and have them in this room before we got started but we'll just live without all those critters this on this first video. But uh so I have a lot of leftover sheep G's plus the new skeins that I've never used, but I didn't want to go out and buy new. I wanted to use what was in my stash. So what I discovered, and I have to show you my cute little bag. You can see this bag. I got this uh, when I was in Ireland uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, it's called Wacky Woolies. Ireland and I, I love this bag so I love using bags for holding projects in as I'm working on them. So in this bag are the yarns that I uh, have gotten out from my whole project for the clothing and everything. Uh, and part way through this video here pretty soon I'm actually going to be switching over to my overhead camera so you can see what uh, is really going to be here in my hands and on the table. You won't be seeing me um, but you'll get a better view of uh, what I'm actually working with. But before I do that I'm going to talk about my yarns. All of these uh, are sheep G's except for two two skeins. So what I discovered it, when I went through my um, stash is I only had one skein of this creamy white. It's not a stark white, it's a creamy white. And um, I realized that I wasn't going to have enough of this probably to do all of the clothing. And so I'm changing up the clothing a little bit um, I'm going to use two grays, a light gray and a dark gray for his little outfit. And of course, I just dropped the one skein. So, okay, I'm back. So the, the clothing is going to be the light gray, this dark gray, and I am going to use the turquoise um, for the trim, like the pattern shows, because I just think that'll help all of that pop. Didn't have a true yellow for the star, but I have this, um, oh, kind of a, I don't know what this color would be called. And they just use, oh, they call it lemon quartz. Well, let's just go with that. And this is a stone wash sheep G's. Um, this is a stone washed. Also this one. This yarn here is Valley Yarns, West Hampton. I got this off of um, webs as I did these. And then for the little bathrobe, um, I happened to have this left over from a baby blanket that I made here recently. And this was the body of the sheep on the baby's blanket and this will work great. It's just an acrylic and I've lost the label, uh, but I got it at a craft store. So that's going to be the bathrobe. It'll be perfect for that. Uh, and then these along with this tan will be for the sloth himself. This is going to be his uh, little mouth and snout area. This will be around the eyes. The body will be in this color and then of course the white on the face. So that's, uh, I've got it all laid out in advance. You know, sometimes I don't get that organized, but this time I'm that organized. So I'm going to put all of this away except for the yarn that's going to be for the body and for the arms and legs. And because I knit in the round, uh, and if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I actually uh, knit in the legs and the arms into the body when I get to the appropriate spot 
on on the body so the first thing I have to do is make both the arms and the legs so that's what I'll be doing in uh, in this knit along is and you don't have to do it that way uh, if you want to go ahead and and work on your body uh, you can there's nothing saying you have to do it just as in the process that I'm doing it but I do want to make I'm going to video the process I go through because I do get a lot of questions from people uh, as to how do I actually do it. So, uh, you know, you don't have to stay along with us, but I, I would love to see your end product. You know, as I was thinking about putting this together, I thought, well, it would be really fun if uh, when you're on and viewing, which you, you will be doing right now if you're watching this video. Uh, in the reply section, it would be really fun to know what part of the world you're watching this from. You know, yeah, it would be great if you said what state you were in if you're in the U.S., but if you don't want to do that, you could just say U.S. Um, but if you feel comfortable putting the state in, I'm in Oregon. I know we have a couple people watching that uh, are in Oregon, a number of you from Canada, but it would be great to know the province. I just think it would be kind of fun to, to know that. And then feel free, you know, if you wanted to give some additional, you don't have to, but if you wanted to say if this was your first, you know, time knitting a critter, um, or if you've been knitting for years, if you wanted to indicate that, uh, it just would make it, I think, interesting for all of us to, to see that. And so um, I'm gonna, get started here. I'm going to turn my camera around so there'll be a little teeny bleep in the video here and I'm going to get some stitches cast on to my needles. Okay, I think I'm ready to actually put some stitches on my needle. We're going to first find our place in our pattern. Normally I have my pattern on my camera and computer and follow along there and don't use my actual book so much but my computer and camera are all tied up with the recording part so um, I'm, I'm following along in in my book you can see I have totally uh, cut my book apart which is really a shame uh, because it's such a lovely book but um, I do refer back to the book often, so I have enjoyed making it so I can easily turn the pages and lay the pages open flat. Um, so I'm looking at page 72 and to the section that says legs because that's what we're going to start with first. And it says work as standard legs. Uh, see standard body parts and I'm trying to do this from a very basic standpoint because I know we will have people come on here that have never knitted one of these critters this is kind of a big pattern book for someone that's never done one before and uh, so I know for some of you this is um, kind of an oh duh maybe but for those that have not had a lot of experience with this book uh, I'm going to try to be very basic and I have put my own tabs in so it's easy to find my way through the book but I'm going to go to the section of the book where it is the body parts and um, we have on page 8 the abbreviations so if you've or if you're new and you've not learned these abbreviations or read through them I would advise you to do that before we actually start knitting and she's very good at showing in the pattern the when to refer back to this page here for abbreviations and we'll talk more about that as we get to those spots but I'm finding the standard body part and um, that starts on page 12 and I'm going over to do the legs first and so the legs start out here on page 14 and right up here in the pattern uh, it, it's the plain legs and you're to make two of them so that's what we're going to do and we're going to get started casting on right at that spot right here where it says plain legs 
So this is my knitting needle I prefer to use. I do not use the same needle size that she does. Very, very close to what the pattern calls for. Um, they start out with a 2.75. I start out with a 2.5 and I use 2.75 for the clothing. So the legs and body parts I do on a 2.5 and that is all to personal preference and to your gauge. I like a, a tighter knit body um, because I, I just think it holds the um, stuffing, they hold their shape and that's what works for me. But you can go up in size, uh, you can do these with a DK weight or a sports weight or a sock yarn. Um, and it's all going to vary just a little bit in size, but as long as you're consistent with all your body pieces and to the clothing pieces, no problem. They're, everything's going to work and fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out uh, three of my little knitting needles here and um, get some stitches on. And where did I lay my yarn down? Well, look at that. It fell on the floor. Okay, so as we all know, there's several ways to cast on, and I'm not going to go through a technique for casting on. I'm just going to show you the cast on that I do. So I'm going to show you how I start out the legs. And the very first part of the pattern where it's talking about the legs, we're really starting to build the foot, and then we'll work our way up the leg but this is the part we're working on right now is the bottom of this foot and um, the pattern if you're knitting in the flat um, you're going to end up having a seam and all your stitches will be on one one needle but I'm going to do this on cast on on two stitches or just two needles and um, I won't be sewing up a seam at the bottom of the foot. This will actually combine it together. So hang with me and I'll um, show you how I do it. And this is how I start out the toe of a sock also. Okay, this is kind of tight quarters here, but uh, I'm going to show you how I cast on for uh, knitting my critter in the round, starting off with the foot. I'm actually following the directions on page 14. And uh, this is how I start my socks out also, just as an FYI, how I do the toe of the sock. So I'm putting my yarn between my two needles. And you don't have to cast on this way. This is just how I do it. You can be doing it in the flat just exactly as the pattern says but I'm showing you how I do it so I'm doing what I call a figure eight cast on and I need a total of 20 stitches which is going to be 10 stitches on this upper needle and 10 stitches on this lower needle so I'm going to wrap it so that's one wrap I'm going to bring it back between up over back down between the two needles now I've got two stitches on this, what I'm calling my upper needle. Now that's three, four, and in some of my earlier videos, I show real detail about how I do this. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now I don't have real tight tension on this, but um, you know my needles will still slide in there. So you don't want to make it too tight, but you don't want it sloppy either. So I need my yarn to be back up here on the top. So I'm going to bring my live yarn right up here so it's on this upper needle. And now I'm going to knit uh, across and this is building the bottom part of the foot. I'll bring the camera back or the pattern back over. 
I'm building this bottom part of the foot. The pattern would have you do this in the straight and you sew up a seam there and you can do that. Nothing wrong with that. This is how I have altered the pattern just a little bit. So now we're going to knit across this top section. The beauty of these little flexi flips is if you pull your needle, the bottom needle, to where it's at the cord, it just loosens up the tension. It makes these stitches a little easier to knit into. So now we're going to knit across 10 stitches on the top. Just a plain old knit. Now, I knit like my grandma taught me, my little Swedish grandma, and I didn't know for years that it was different than everybody else. Most people knit into this front loop. My sister and I knit into the back loop. And once I figured out I was wrong, I thought, well, it's working. I'm just going to continue doing it. So um, I'll show that to you again. I go in this way from right to left and I'm actually knitting through that back part of that stitch where I think most everybody and I also knit continental um, most people that knit continental if this doing a knit stitch I think you knit into this front side and once in a while I do have to do that to make the stitch come looking right so you know let's just face it I'm all confused in how I knit but it works and so I'm going to continue with it so that's four and you may th you may throw what they call throw and I don't do that uh, but if that's how you knit do it and uh, just make it make it work we're all going to get from point a to point b maybe we travel a little different journey to get there but we're all going to end up in the same spot with terrific looking critters at the end of the day so don't feel like just because i'm doing continental that you have to you can take a lot of the changes that i've made and adapt to um, your method of of knitting also Let's count and see that we've got 10 stitches on the top. I think we do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm 10 stitches on the top. Now notice when I turn this, I'm, I'm going to flip it around this way, kind of like a cartwheel. And now we have to knit across the stitches that were on that bottom needle, the other 10. So I'm going to slip this bottom needle onto the cord part and slip this needle back to get to the point. Get this little yarn out of the way. And I want to make sure I have 10 loops there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten and you always get one extra when you do the figure eight so I'm just going to get rid of that last little stitch just like that and now we're going to knit across this needle and we will then have completed the cast on knit one row and I'll stop and explain that when I get to the end of this row. There's my 20 stitches. And if you were to sew up a seam, it would have been right there, but we've eliminated having to sew that seam. So this whole foot and leg is going to totally be knitted in the round. Um, and I, we won't have any sewing on that foot or leg. So this is the beginning of now what would be row three because if you notice your pattern says cast on which we did that figure eight cast on and then it says row one purl well because we're knitting in the round all purl rows become knit rows so if you're knitting flat that row 
you would have just done as a purl. But because I'm knitting in a round, that was a knit row and all other <laughs> in the pattern, anything that says a purl row will be a knit row for me. So I'm actually going to be on row two. And um, so row two is a knit one, make one, and then knit six. So I would love to be able to sit more comfortably. I'm having to really try to stay in the in the camera for you, and that's okay. I'll I'll figure this out. I might just have to move around a little bit from time to time. If you notice, um, and I'm going to put a marker. Let's just do that right now. Uh, this is where I began the row. This is where we ended up. So this is the beginning of each row is on this end of the needle. Um, get into my little treasure trove box over here. And this is where all my little markers are. I'm assuming you might have a little box like this close at hand that you have all those little things that we need to use quick and in a hurry. I love these little markers. They don't take up a lot of room on your needle. And uh, I'm gonna put it here on this end, but I'm also gonna make sure that it's on, this is my, my right side, this is the inside, or the wrong side they would refer to sometimes. This is the knit side, the smooth side. This side is has the pearl bumps on it. So, I'm going to put it at this end and on this side and that way it just is a reminder to me that oh this is the beginning of my rows here. I'm going to begin and end right here because I don't know about you but I can lay my knitting down and be in a hurry and I pick it up and I think oh which what is the beginning and where am I? <laughs> so when I put a little marker to indicate that it just helps speed speed up that process a little bit. So the next row that it, 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 we're on row two and it's knit one, make one. So I'm going to do my knit one and then we're going to talk just a little bit about make one because there's, you have a couple of options and I believe in her patterns uh, in the description she does a make one by picking up this loop right there. There's a little bar or a loop you can call it whatever you want and you can do that. I sometimes need to do that if it's like in the in a clothing and it's the raglan uh, area of a clothing uh, I will do the make one on that little bar right there but on the feet and legs and arms and on the body I like to pick up this stitch this leg of the stitch right below the one we're going to the next row the next stitch in line let's put it that way so Kat Brody, who is uh, no longer with us, but she was a prolific uh, sock knitter and wrote many patterns for socks. She called um, this live stitch that's on the needle, she called that the mother. And the one right below it, she called the doc daughter. And I think she referred to the one below that as the grandma. She was cute. She told stories, made up stories about the different parts of the... <laughs> the stitch but she would call this the right leg of the daughter and she would say pick that leg up and put it over the horse <laughs> it's called the needle the horse and knit into that and that's what we're going to do knit into that and that's a make one and now we're going to knit the mother which was the original stitch and that is the, um, we did the make one and now it says knit six. So that's the first one of the knit six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my knit six. And then the pattern says, knit two, make one twice. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the knit two, is one, two, 
we're going to make one again. So I'm going to go down and pick up the leg of the daughter, the right leg of the daughter, which is that little loop right there. Put it up on the horse, knit it, slip it off. That's the make one. And then we're going to do that again. We're going to knit two. So there's one. Now we've got to turn our knitting around to do the, un the stitches that were on the other side. And I just lost count, didn't I? So this is good. You can see how this is done. So this is my knit one. Here's my make one. Then the knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six. The knit two, the make one, and now I'm on the knit two. So there's one, two, and I have to do one more M1, which is make one. There's the leg. Get, get the leg of the daughter right down there. Put it up on the horse, <laughs> like Kate Brody says. I split the yarn there. Knit into that leg, the right leg of the daughter. Whoop. Okay, so that was the make one. And now it says knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoop, seven, eight. Okay, and then the pattern, that line, row two, ends with a make one, knit one. So we're going to pick up the leg of the daughter, which is right there, put it up on the horse. <laughs> Get my needle in there. This is why I love the flexi flips. If you notice, my needles are bent. They're not firm sticking out here, which I kind of find frustrating with straight needle. This is easier on the hand. Finish up this make one. And then we have one stitch left, which is a knit one. And there we go. So that is row two, doing it in the round. Now, if you visualized, if this was in the straight, these, these stitches would all be on one needle straight across, but I'm doing it in the round. That's why it looks so different. But I'm eliminating having seams to sew up. I don't like to sew up seams. I don't think I do them very well. And so you may be excellent at it. And if you are, um, do that. You know, they turn out beautifully. I have to have a little drink of water out of my big red, my big red cup. Okay, so now we are on to row three. And I will show you what I do just um, when I'm working with my book. I have, if I can get this under the camera, I have a little sticky note. And that's what I use to keep myself in line. Now, as I said, I have a program on my phone and on my computer that I can download these patterns onto and I follow along and they have a highlighter line that I actually move through my uh, pattern on online or on my phone or on my computer, whichever one I'm working off of. But um, like I said, they're tied up in the videoing today. So I'm using my book and I'm using my sticky notes so I don't lose my place. That's so easy to do. So go back here and pick up my knitting. And this is, if you're knitting in the flat, uh, you're on a purl row, but this is an 
knit row for me. So I'm not going to show you every line like that, but I just wanted to show you how I do the increases of the make ones. And um, once you kind of get a picture for that in your head, they are quite easy to do. And I just like the um, the outcome. I, I, I like how the smoothness of the bottom of the foot and um, I'm going to be doing a similar um, thing to the top of the foot where there is a seam uh, as it comes into what would be the ankle. Uh, I do that with um, kind of a, th well, not kind of, I do it with the three needle bind off and I eliminate having uh, a seam there too to sew up. So um, that just works for me. Now, um, I think that knitting is kind of like making bread. <laughs> You know, you just have to practice and get your your fingers and hands um, adjusted. I, I really think these critters um, are in some ways uh, more demanding on your hands than like knitting a sweater or a, you know, a bigger piece of work because these are littler, they're more compact, um, you're knitting in small spaces um, so there it, it's a little more demanding I think um, on your hands and your knitting skill um, and I, I tell you I was just never ever interested in knitting any kind of animal until I saw uh, these wild animal friends and the other for her first book knitted animal friends I just think they have so much character and just so much fun and people love them and um, that's that just makes life fun so now I'm back at the beginning I've, I've knitted all the way around and so now we are going to go to row four and I think you can uh, figure that out. I'm just going to keep knitting here and um, we'll probably uh, take a little break here in the video uh, just so I can actually knit a little faster um, and not have you just have to sit here and watch me knit every stitch. I mean that would be kind of boring. Um, I just did a make one. Uh, I'm on row four and that was a knit one, make one. So a knit one, there's my make one. And I'm gonna do that again. So that's my knit one. And now I'm gonna do that make one. So lifting up that right leg of the daughter stitch, knit into that. And then it is knit six. So I'm just going to work away here for a while and uh, I will be coming back on the video in a few minutes and probably be where um, I think all the rest of this is pretty self-explanatory up to the point that it's the top of the foot and I'm going to show you then how I do that part.